In this question, we are asked to find the speed and the direction of each sinusoidal wave propagation as shown right over here, where out of the four waves, this here is the first wave and the second wave is where we have this function that is revealed which is indicating a slight difference in the operations as shown right at this end of this function followed by the next one which is over here which highlights the fact that we have a sine function not a cosine function and then finally is d where we'll be mainly comparing the c function here to that of the d function and so let's begin by assuming that the units of the variables in this case variable x as shown right over here in all four questions is measured in meters and the variable t as shown in all four functions is measured in seconds so let's begin now given the wave background we observe that given a specific sinusoidal graph where the x-axis represents our time and this here is our y-axis we can show a function in terms of the sinusoidal wave in this particular form therefore the general formula for the wave function is represented as y in the bracket x which represents our position and the time is equal to the amplitude which is represented as a times the cosine into bracket the variable k multiplied by x which is the position plus or minus the angular frequency times your time rk which represents the wave number is expressed as 2 pi over lambda which lambda represents the wave length while the other variable is represented as the angular frequency and this is expressed as 2 pi over the big T and this big T represents our period now in terms of the direction of the wave when your wave is moving in the positive direction which means that it is heading to the right for conversion purpose or east we look at the previous time which means that our t is minus our x which is our position divided by the velocity or speed therefore this is going to be reflected on our wave function which implies that we will be focusing on the negative sign of our wave function and so that is what we are looking at right here and when your wave function is moving in the negative direction or you can say is pointing towards the west we are determining our time to be a little time where t plus our position divided by our velocity or speed reflects what we have for the phase part of our wave function which is represented as the positive sign which is what we will use to determine the direction of the wave and finally the wave speed which is expressed as the variable v is expressed as what the frequency multiplied by the wavelength or you can say that since the frequency can be written as 1 over the period you can now express this as the wavelength divided by the period and so these are the things that we are going to use in order for we to understand fully what this particular 
with functions represents based on not only the speed but also the direction. Now for the solution given all four functions as stated above and then we need to be able to determine what our speed is we know that we need not only the wavelength but also we need the period and so to gain access to our wavelength we need to recognize that we need to focus on what is the k which is where the wave number comes into play and to figure this out we need to highlight the part where our wave number is found on each of these functions as shown right here and our wave number is on the coefficient for x as shown right over here and by applying this formula which is 2 pi over lambda we will be able to determine what lambda is for these following functions as shown right here where for the first two here we see that our lambda or our wavelength are the same on the other hand for the other two signs we see that our wavelength is pi however for the other one it is 4 pi on the other hand we need to determine what our period is and our period is gotten from our angular frequency which is equal to 2 pi over our period therefore applying it to where it is positioned in the function given it is located at the coefficient for our t which is our time and so which is highlighted right over here therefore by solving we are going to arrive at the following results therefore while all three here have the same period this other function here doesn't have the same period as the other three finally we're going to determine what the wave speed is which is expressed as the variable v and this is determined by the ratio between the wavelength and the period and we are able to determine them here for all four functions now for the first function we were able to see that by dividing our wavelength by our period the wave speed to be equal to the number 5.0 meter per second and for the second function we can determine our velocity to be equal to the following which is also 5.0 meter per second next is the third function where once we put in our numbers we go to arrive at this value for our speed to be equal to 7.5 meter per second and finally for our final function once we put in our values our velocity is equal to 24 meter per second now once we're able to highlight what the speeds are for each of the functions as highlighted here our final step is to determine the direction the direction depends mainly on the phase section of our wave function where we are looking at the operation sign between the x and the t variables and so in conclusion if i have a positive sign that means that i am having my direction to be pointing towards the left which means that your wave function is heading to the left direction on the other hand if i have a negative sign 
it means that my wave function is moving to the right and so based on these we can apply it to the four functions where for the first function since we see that the sign between our x and t is a negative sign we are going to conclude that the direction of this wave function is leaning to the right and the same thing is applicable to the function which is our sine one where the sign between the t and the x which is the time and the position respectively shows that it is a negative sign which means that it is relating towards the right side of the wave function and finally we have the others which are positive for our t and x which shows that it is leaning towards the left side so this is how we are able to only determine the direction of our wave function but also determine the speed of our wave function which is heavily dependent on the period and that of the wavelength and you can extract those from our angular frequency and from our wave number so i hope you found this really informative please hit a comment down below let me hear your thoughts about this by the way i can talk to you all soon stay smart as always and believe in yourselves